Hello, this is Ms. DB. In this video, we are going to write and solve proportions. So what is a proportion? A proportion is an equation that states that two ratios are equal. So for example, 3 over 4 equals 6 over 8. 3 to 4 equals 6 to 8. So we talked about ratios in an earlier assignment. And if you have two ratios that are equal to each other, you have a proportion. So there's a couple different ways to make sure that we have a true proportion, that is, that both ratios are equal to the same value. So one way is to simplify each of your ratios to its simplest form and see if it's the same ratio. So 4 over 12, we can simplify that by dividing both the 4 and the 12 by their common factor. And their greatest common factor is 4. So 4 divided by 4 is 1. And 12 divided by 4 is 3, so we get 1 third as our simplest ratio. Then I'm going to simplify 9 over 27 the same way. Its greatest factor would be 9. So I can take 9 divided by 9, and that's 1. And 27 divided by 9 is 3. So these are the same. They are equal ratios, so that means that my proportion is true. I really do have a true proportion there. That's one way to check if you have a true proportion. Another way is to, what we're going to discuss next is called cross products. So before we get to that, we need to look at something else, and that is the parts of a proportion. So if you wrote your proportion as A over B equals C over D, the A and D, these two diagonal from each other, are called the extremes. It's just a name that they have, and they are called the extremes. And if you take the other pair of diagonals, which is this way, those are called the means. And we have a special rule, it's called the cross product rule, that states that the product of the means, that means you multiply the two numbers in the means, is equal to the product of the extremes. In other words, cross products are equal. So A times D equals B times C, or B times C equals A times D. It doesn't matter which way you multiply them, it will be true. All right, so that brings us to our other way of checking that we have a true proportion. You can use the cross product rule. If the cross products are equal, we have a true proportion. So here's the same proportion we had earlier. And we can check that 4 times 27 has to be equal to 12 times 9. If those two things are equal, then we have a true proportion. So you can get your calculator out and you can check, but 4 times 27 is 108, and 12 times 9 is also 108. So since their cross products are equal, we know we have a true proportion. So for the first part of the worksheet, I think there's eight, eight problems you are going to tell whether or not you have a true proportion. So remember, there's two ways of doing that. One way is to simplify both ratios and see if you get the same ratio. If so, then it's a true proportion. The other way is to multiply the cross products and see if you get the same product for each. And if so, then you have a true proportion. So there's some problems that will be real easy to check by simplifying like for example number three. Five over two is already in the simplest form, so we really only need to simplify ten over six. If that also simplifies to five over two, then we will have a true proportion. So I can divide both ten and six by its common factor of two. They're both even numbers, so two will go into both of them evenly. Ten divided by two is five. Six divided by two is three. So I have five halves for the first one, and five-thirds for this, why is this disappearing? That was weird. My, my, <laughs> now it all came back. Okay, many five-thirds. So five-thirds is not the same. So I would say no, because they are not, that is not a true proportion. The ratios do not simplify to the same thing. Okay. Another way of checking is with cross products. Let's do um, number six. So if I want to check this one with cross products, I would multiply the two diagonals. Now my pen stopped working. 
like, uh, what was I doing, six? Come on, pen. Well, I'll just type it. In number six, I would type four times ten as one of my options. So the cross products would be four times ten, and we want to see if this is equal to nine times eight. It's not, because four times ten is forty, and nine times eight is seventy-two. So this is not a proportion. So that's how you do it, checking cross products. You could also do 9 times 8 equals 4 times 9 and see if they're true. It doesn't matter which order you do it in. All right, for the next section, you're going to, it says use proportional reasoning to find the value of the variable in each proportion. So in other words, they want you to find the missing number that would make this be a true proportion. Now, doing it with proportional reasoning means basically figure out what the equivalent fraction would be. We can also do it with cross products. So if you want to wait and do that section after you learn how to do it with cross products, you can. But I'll show you a couple of them just using proportional reasoning. Okay, so number 10 says 15 over 30, that's one ratio, is equal to something over 2. So let's think about this. 15 out of 30 means that if you have 30 things, you're selecting 15 of them. Well, 15 is half of 30, so the missing number here is 1 because 1 half is equal to 15 over 30. They're the same ratio. So that's just kind of figuring it out. That's what that means. Um, some of them might be a little bit hard to just figure out, like 2 ninths. So 2 out of 9 equals something out of 63. Well, I'm not sure how many, but we can do um, equivalent fractions. We could say, well, um, 2 ninths, I could multiply 9 by something to get 63. What could I multiply 9 by? Well, 60, uh, 9 times 5 is 45. 9 times 6 is 54. 9 times 7, that's equal to 63. So that means I also have to multiply the numerator by 7. And if I do that, I will get 9 times 7 equals 63 on the bottom. And on the top, I would get the value of n. And 2 times 7 is equal to 14, so 14 is the missing number. So that's what, for these problems, you can try to figure out the rest of them using some of those skills. On the next section now, we're going to learn about how to solve proportions with cross products. And this will work to solve any proportion. So the first step is to cross multiply. That means to multiply the extremes, and that will equal the product of the means. The product of the means equals the product of the extremes. So in number or in this example problem, they have 52 over 4 equals n over 7. So we're going to multiply the diagonals. So 4 times n is 4n, and 52 times 7, you can use your calculator, is 364. So 4n equals 364. Now we're trying to solve for n, so we can divide both sides by n to see what it equals. So 4n over 4, the 4's cancel, and you're just left with n. And 364 divided by 4, you can check on your calculator, is equal to 91. So we get our answer that n is equal to 91. All right, so you're going to solve the following proportions. You can use um, reasoning skills if you want, or you can use the cross products method. Let's try number 16. So we can multiply the diagonals, and they will equal the other diagonals. So 30 times y is 30 times y, or you can just write 30y. It means the same thing. And then we multiply 18 times 4 is equal to 72, and that's equal to 30 times y. Now to solve this, it's not, it's going to be a decimal answer because I can't take 30 times a whole number to equal 72, but we'll just divide both sides by 30 and use our calculator to find out what is 72 divided by 30. And it's equal to 2.4. 
So the answer to number 16 would be y equals 2.4. And that's how you'll solve these proportion problems. Let's look at um, number 20. There's nothing different in 20 except that it's decimal numbers. But we would still multiply the one diagonal, and then we would multiply that by, and that would be equal to the other diagonal. So I'm just going to get a different color here. So that means that if I do the two numbers that are in the pink color, I'd have 0.24 times 9.6. I'm just using the parentheses to show multiplication. And that would be equal to a times 3, but we would write that as 3 times a probably. And then we need our calculator. So we need to take, move this over a little bit if I can. There, okay. 0.24 times 9.6 is equal to 2.304. It's not a very nice number, but I'll write down all of it. And that's equal to 3 times A. Now to solve this, you would divide both sides by 3 because that's the opposite of multiplying by 3. So on my calculator, I have 2.304, and I need to divide that by three. 0.768. So A is equal to 0.768 and that would be my solution. So it's okay to get decimals for answers on these problems. Then there are some problems to choose from down below. You have to pick three of them. So there's quite a few but you don't have to do them all. Just pick any three. Let's try number 21. It says that Zach can read seven pages of a book in five minutes. Let's write that as ratio. Seven pages in five minutes. At this rate, how long will it take him to read the entire 175 page book? So we started our first ratio with putting seven pages at the top of the ratio, so I want to put the 175 pages also at the top of my ratio, and I don't know how long it's going to take him. So I'll just put X. So let's write this again a little simpler without all the, the labels, the pages and the minutes and all of that. Let's just write it with our numbers. So we would have 7 over 5 equals 175 over X. So now you have a proportion to solve, the same as we did our earlier problems, and you can uh, do cross products or equal. So 7 times x will equal 5 times 175, and then simplify each side of the equal sign, well, the right side, and then divide by 7 to get your answer. Now I'm not going to solve the next one, but I'm going to help you set it up. So it says a man can make 12 birdhouses in 8 hours. So write that as a ratio, 12 birdhouses in 8 hours. So we put birdhouses on the top, and we put the time, the hours, on the bottom. When you do your second ratio, you have to do the same setup. So it says how many hours, they don't know, will it take them to make 30 birdhouses? So the 30 birdhouses, that's what is in the numerator. And the x, or the unknown, is what's in the denominator. So you'll use that proportion to solve and find the solution. So make sure when you set up your proportion that your ratios are set up equally. Alright, I will let you pick the other one to do and let me know if you have any questions. Have a wonderful day.